Atomic Habits writes, allow yourself to be a beginner. No one starts off being excellent. This statement is so true, especially as it relates to leadership and the learning curve for many of us. Many new and emerging leaders apply the pressure when it comes to leadership development. Just like Rome wasn't built in a day, but it evolved into a beautiful empire with history and culture that are evident even to this day, so will your leadership develop over time in the same way. That's why in today's video, we'll discuss how to prepare for leadership with six areas to develop as a new leader. So if you wanna know how to prepare for leadership roles that maximize your success, keep watching. focus on building the next generation of leaders, there's a greater emphasis placed on the importance of leadership development in the workplace. More often than not, we see emerging leaders taking ownership of their careers and the path towards developing in a greater leadership capacity. If you're one of those leaders, then keep watching because today's video is all about how to prepare for leadership in your next role so that you'll be able to distinguish yourself from others in ways that produce great results. So let's get into it. The first thing that you can do to prepare for a leadership role is dedicate yourself to learning how to be a leader. This means that you should begin the process of leadership development in order to stretch yourself beyond the basics of daily management functions. When American entrepreneur and motivational speaker Jim Rohn was asked about one of the keys to success, his response that the key to success is become an above average person. Personal leadership development is making a personal internal assessment of who you currently are as a leader and determining what kinds of things you would need to learn and what kinds of actions you would need to take to make an internal transformation into becoming a better leader. Learning about things like performance management, change management, emotional intelligence are just a few examples that are a part of the knowledge base of an effective leader. The real question is, are you willing to put in the work that it takes to set yourself apart and become a great leader? There's an African proverb that states, no person is born great. Great people become great when others are sleeping. Now you can take that literally or figuratively. It doesn't really matter. However, it signals that becoming an effective leader requires putting in extra work and making an extra effort. Years ago, when I was a brand new leader seeking promotional opportunities, I couldn't figure out why I wasn't transitioning from middle level management to upper level leadership. It was extremely frustrating for me, but I had a great leadership coach who I was only able to work with for a short time, but in that time, he helped me to shift my thinking. He asked me three very specific questions. He asked, what are you reading? What are you watching? and what are you listening to? He also added a fourth, who are you talking to? The first question was to make me aware that I should be reading industry news and basic leadership tenets. The second question was to get me to start watching and listening to things that would enhance my leadership skills and transform my thought process. The next question was to get me to begin thinking about networking opportunities and to surround myself with other leaders. It seems simple enough, right? He wanted me to understand that I couldn't keep doing the same things while wanting to show up differently as a leader. How does the saying go again? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. The change needed to happen within me in order for me to transition into the leader that I wanted to be. It's important to have an inward focus on personal development that lends itself toward continuous education, development, and dedicated focus. Thought leader Simon Sinek has a quote that reinforces this notion. He says, 
you're never as good as you could be. Like this video if you agree with that quote. The quote suggests that leaders should become lifelong learners so that we can continue to evolve and grow. This ties into the very next tip. The second thing that you can do to prepare for a leadership role is work on developing your soft skills. Things like communication skills, conflict resolution, learning, coaching, conversation techniques are all soft skill sets that will be invaluable to you in your leadership role. This is because soft skills development allow you to lead your direct reports in a way that is people focused and in keeping with your company's mission, vision, and values. And the information is out there. There are a lot of free and paid online courses that you can take from the comfort of your very own home. In an article published in 2018, Forbes predicted that e-learning is the educational wave of the future. The article states that in 2025, e-learning will be a $325 billion industry. So the information is available and online platforms are transitioning to our new classrooms. Many major reputable universities are also offering free online courses for soft skill development. So take advantage of it. In 2020, when a lot of us are spending more time at home during the pandemic, it's the perfect opportunity if you have the spare time to take advantage of it. Let me know in the comments if you've taken online courses to brush up on your leadership or personal or professional development skills by typing, I'm an e-learner. Let me know, I'm interested in, in hearing about that. So let's get into tip number three. Tip number three is invest in mentorship. There's a Ugandan proverb that says, leadership is best taught by a leader. One of the best things that you can do to prepare for a leadership role is to learn from someone who has leadership experience, knowledge and practice. Having your leadership development influenced by the wisdom and insight of other leaders has a transformative factor and effect. Not only does it enhance you, it also reinforces good leadership habits and it debunks some leadership myths. As the popular saying goes, success leaves clues. This means that one way to learn how to be good at something is to follow the best practices and leadership philosophies of those who came before you. So basically put, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just study what other great leaders have done to become effective. Let's segue into a particular point that I wanna make about mentorship investment. When I first introduced tip number two, you may have noticed that I used the word invest instead of find. So let's discuss what the difference is. Making a personal investment in mentorship or investing in mentorship opportunities suggests that the responsibility of the mentorship or mentoring relationship lies with the mentee and not with the mentor. The opposite of this is when people traditionally say, find a mentor. To me, finding a mentor suggests that the responsibility of the mentoring relationship is disproportionately assigned to the mentor instead of to the mentee. This places a huge responsibility of doing the bulk of the work on the mentor instead of placing it where it belongs on the mentee. My position is that we need to begin to shift how we think of leader mentorship and what it should look like. In its traditional form, mentorship usually looks like the mentee selecting someone who they admire and whom the mentee believes would be an excellent person to learn from and they model their leadership after that person. This usually evolves into a one-on-one -on -one mentoring relationship where knowledge and best practices are transferred from the mentor to the mentee. This mentoring relationship can involve a series of scheduled meetings, shadowing opportunities, and the list goes on in terms of the scheduled interactions. If you look at the dynamic within the traditional mentorship model, the mentor does most of the heavy lifting. By heavy lifting, I mean the mentor does a lot of work. The mentor spends time sharing knowledge and experience. The mentor provides best practice information and feedback. The mentor may also recommend beneficial reading materials or if insider information and the mentor often makes room on their schedule for the mentee's shadowing opportunities. So now that we've discussed the heavy lifting, think about someone who you admire most. 
and you'd love to have that opportunity to have that person mentor you personally. I also want you to think about how busy that person might be and how valuable the time that they would take to mentor you would also be. Do you see what I'm getting at? What I'm saying is that the traditional mentorship model places a huge responsibility on the mentor and sometimes you may not have access to someone who can mentor you in the traditional way. So back to my original point, if you shift your thinking to mentorship investment instead of finding a mentor, thus viewing it as a personal undertaking or a personal responsibility, you will find that your access to potential mentors could expand exponentially. Think of it this way. You'll find creative ways to accomplish the same thing without placing the responsibility of the mentorship on someone who may or may not be readily available and accessible to you. So here are three things that you can do to get a mentor. Number one, you can follow the traditional path. As I discussed previously, there's nothing wrong with following that path if you go about it in the right way. I'm not saying that mentors mind offering the traditional mentoring relationship, nor am I saying that you shouldn't seek these personal mentoring partnerships out when they are available to you. I'm just saying realize what's actually being offered. It's time, knowledge, experience, and this allows us to appreciate the value of the mentors who make themselves available to us in this way. In these kinds of mentoring relationships, it's important to show appreciation and to find some small way to add value to the relationship. Because two things are for certain. People like to feel appreciated when they offer their time, and people also like people who add value to them. If you want to know more about those two topics, be sure to check out my video where I go into detail about how to show appreciation and also how to add value. I'll try to place the link somewhere in the video description box below. Number two, another way to invest in your own mentorship and seek out mentorship relationships or mentorship assistance is to seek online mentorship. What do I mean by this? There are many thought leaders in your industry who have provided free content on the internet for your individual use. There are books, articles, blog posts, TED Talks, and YouTube channels full of accessible information. Mentorship doesn't always mean that the mentee needs to know the mentor personally. Everything you need to get to know your favorite thought leader is at your fingertips. The third way to invest in your own mentorship and seek out mentoring relationship is to do so through silent observation. You can observe the habits and actions of someone whom you admire and work closely with. Using this option, you don't have to make a formal request for a mentoring relationship. It's important to remember that some people like being mentors and some people don't. Some people feel pressure or anxiety around mentorship requests so don't feel badly if they decline. Another reality is some people just don't have the time to commit to a formal mentoring relationship, and that's okay too. So as an alternative, choose a leader who is close to you that you can watch and see how they lead. You can look at what they do and what they say and gauge their leadership effectiveness. Allow that person to informally model the way for you. No matter which of these three options you choose, Remember that mentoring doesn't mean that you have to follow their leadership style play by play. You just pattern and cultivate your leadership style based on what you observe that works best for you. I always say, use what you need and throw the rest out. The fourth thing that you can do to prepare for a leadership role is establish professional ethics. We each have a personal value system whether we realize it or not. It's what makes some people detest liars and makes other people slower to forgive when their trust is broken. As a leader, it will be important for you to identify what your personal value system is and also become familiar with what are considered common ethical standards for leaders. Are you trustworthy? Are you able to keep private matters confidential? Or are you a gossiper? Do you lead with integrity? Or are you dishonest? Are you ready to be called to behave at a higher standard of accountability or do you shift blame? It may not be fair, but it's required of leaders. In her article entitled Great Leaders Have Ethics, 
taken from leaders.com, Dr. Mary Kay outlines a few examples of ethical leadership. In the article, she wrote the following, Valuing employees, respect, and integrity are common core values that are virtually displayed in mission statements or in employee handbooks. Great leaders realize that it is not phrasing within the document that makes the difference. The real difference comes from the leader's behavior or how they show up every day. As you develop into a conscientious leader, it will be important for you to create a value system for yourself that you will follow as a personal code of conduct. It should infuse your leadership in a way that both your direct reports and indirect reports can recognize and respect. Tip number five of the things that you can do to prepare for a leadership role. Get prepared to accept and manage change. If life in 2020 in particular has taught us nothing else, it has taught us that change is unpredictable and inevitable. Leaders should remain flexible with an agile mindset. This is because leaders not only have to accept and be comfortable with change, but you also need to be able to guide your team through it. Change may come in the form of helping your team through uh, new process changes or learning how to use new software. Change may also come in the form of helping your team transition from the traditional office environment to distance management and working from home offices. Did you do a good job of helping your team managing that change? If not, it's not too late. And I have two separate videos to provide you with a few tips on how to accomplish that. Change is difficult for some people, but you can help your team to adapt by using proven change management strategies. There are a few change management books and articles that I can recommend if you want me to. So let me know down in the comments and I'll help you by adding that as a resource. Tip number six of things that you can do to prepare for a leadership role is determine your leadership perspective. The first question that I want to ask is, what's your view on leadership? Do you view leadership as the right to be in charge and boss people around? Or are you mostly concerned with the title and the pay than you are about modeling the way for others? The world is filled with people in leadership positions who don't value others. Those kind of people don't view leadership roles as being entrusted with guiding and empowering those that they lead by setting a good example. And because they don't value the role, they often abuse the position and mishandle people. There's a Kenyan saying that goes, to lead is not to run roughshod over people. We come into our own as inspiring and dynamic leaders when we realize that leadership is not a right, but an honor and a privilege. In his book, Five Levels of Leadership, author John C. Maxwell describes human capital as being a company's greatest asset. And to develop human capital, a company needs good leaders. His first level of leadership is positional leadership. You want to avoid being like the first level of leadership that he mentions, because at that level, people only follow you because you have a title and a position. This means that they follow you because they're required to. Instead, you want to be more like the level two leader called the permission level. Maxwell states that at the permission level, people choose to follow you because they want to. This is based on your personal leadership growth and your ability to make connections and due to the positive way that you show up as a leader. Or you want to aspire to the level five leadership that Maxwell calls the pinnacle where people follow you because of the good leader that you are and because you represent positive values. Leaders have been trusted with a huge responsibility and an opportunity to guide the Earth's most valuable and precious resource, other human beings. 2020 has created a unique opportunity for leaders to prepare. This can mean preparing for your next promotion or preparing to be a more effective leader in your current role. The most important thing to take away and take advantage of at this time is to be able to be immersed in this leadership development period. Thought leader and author Mel Robbins says nothing's going to happen unless you take that initial action. And those are leadership words to live by. Now, if you're watching this video and there are specific topics that you want me to make a video about next related to leadership communication, let me know in the comments. I want to provide the kind of content that you want to see. Also, don't forget to subscribe 
and please share this video with a colleague or a friend. If you haven't already, click the notification bell so that you'll be the first to know when my next video posts. As always, have a great week, be kind to yourself, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.